All right, so in this video, we go over section 6.2 one to one functions and inverse function. So, this is what we do in this section determine whether a function is one to one, find the inverse of a function defined by a map or a set of order pairs, and obtain graphs of inverse function from a graph of a given function, and then find the inverse of a function who's defined by an equation. Let's first of all define what a one-to-one -one function is. So a one-to-one -one function, a function is one-to-one -one if any two different outputs in the domain correspond to two different outputs in the range. For example, well, first that, that means that if we have a function whose um, x1 and x2, they must have different outputs. So in this case this will be a one-to-one -one function. If for some reason we have a function whose x1 and x2 have the same output, then in this case the function is not one-to-one. -one. So let's look at examples and determine whether these are one-to-one. -one. So Number one, of course, the function, the, well, the given, the given relation must be a function. So let's first of all check if this first relation is a function. And we know because none of the x's repeat. So that's good that it's a function. So now, ultimately what we have to do once we know it is a function, we need to know, we need to determine whether it's one to one or not. And we observe the y values, the y components or the outputs. Do you see any repeated output? In this case, I don't see any repeated output. In other words, none of the inputs have the same output. And that's why, yes, this is one to one. All right, now let's look at letter B. Number one, it is a function if you observe the X values, the inputs. So in this case, it is it is a function. Now, let's see if this function is a one-to-one -one function. And in this case, if you observe the second and the fourth order pair, they both have the same output. The, fun the, the relation is still a function, however, not one-to-one. -one. For this reason, because it has the same y value for different inputs. Okay, so we are going to use a new, a new line test, the horizontal line test. For If we recall from earlier in the semester, we'll look at the vertical line test. The vertical line test, if you recall, it was used to determine whether a given graph describes a function or not. If the fun if the vertical line crossed at most once, well, that was the graph of a function. But otherwise, if the graph had um, crossed actually more than once, then the function, then, I mean, the, the given graph was not describing a function. Now, let's do the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test is going to is going to be a similar criteria, but in this case, it's going to be used to determine whether a whether a, the graph describes a one-to-one -one function. And why, why do we care about a function being one-to-one? -one? Well, you will see. Okay, so for each function, use its graph to determine whether the function is one-to-one. -one. So we have the graph of f of x equals x cubed. And if we recall from the library of functions, the function x cubed looks like this. f of x equals x squared will look like a parabola. It's actually a parabola. I claim one of them is one to one, the other one is not. Let's find out which one is, which one is not. This one is one to one, this one is not one to one because the parabola has the same output for two different inputs. 
as opposed to the one to the function f of x equals x cubed. Every horizontal line I trace here crosses only one. Okay, so notice in this case we can tr we can trace many horizontal lines. Every horizontal line that we trace, if we cr if it crosses only once, then this is one to one. Then this is not one to one. So yes and no, not one to one. All right, let's move on to the next page. See what we get. So determine the inverse of a function defined by a map or a set of ordered pairs. So we are given a relation of points, well, a set of points, uh, in order to get the uh, the inverse function. Well, to each x in the domain corresponds exactly one in the range. That's how we know the function. That's why we know a uh, given relation is a function. And then the second part of this is for every y in the range, there is exactly only one element in the domain. That's why it's a one-to-one -one function. So the corresponding from the range of f back to the domain, it's called the inverse function. In other, in other words, all this paragraph, what, it, what it's telling us in fancy language is reverse the order of every element in the function. This is some f of x. Okay. In this case, we use the symbol f to the negative one, which we don't call. We don't say f to the negative one. We call f inverse. Okay. F inverse. And one thing we need to um, be careful about is f inverse f to the negative one is not the same as one over f this is a very common misconception that is not true so let's find the inverse function so f inverse of x all we do is reverse the order of these order pairs instead of negative three comma six six comma negative three Instead of negative two comma six, reverse the order to five comma negative two. Instead of one comma two, reverse the order to two comma one. We don't change signs. We only change elements. We only interchange the positions of the elements. Instead of three comma five, that's five comma three. And finally, instead of four comma eight, that's going to be eight comma four. And curly braces to close our set. And that's what we do. All right, definition. Let f be a one-to-one -one function. This is the important point of this section. So, if we have a function f to be a one-to-one, -one, then f of negative f f f to the negative one is the inverse function. So, here, in, as a matter of a of a theorem or of a definition is if f is 1 to 1 then f has an inverse f to the negative 1 of course f inverse this is not really f to the negative 1 this is just a sy the symbol to denote that that's the inverse function and it's going to meet these two properties it meets the property that that if we evaluate a function at its inverse we get back the initial input and if we evaluate the inverse at its original function we get again the same input so in a matter of um, function machines so the input is x This is the machine f of x. So the output is simply f of x. Now this function will do the inverse of whatever that machine or that function does. That is f inverse. Okay, the input is f of x. The output will be, oops, not, not this symbol. Uh, never mind, forget about this symbol for a second. That's calculus. So you can think of 
this function to undo whatever the first machine did or whatever the first function did. So for example, um, plugging, in, plugging a number, adding five and then subtracting five. That's one example of doing and undoing. So the output will be the original input which was X. So in other words, we go back and forth between a function and its, and its inverse just to carry the input X. We started with X, we finish with X. So let's determine, let's look at this, um, let's look at some examples to verify that the inverse of G of X equals X cubed is inver is G to the G inverse of X equals the cube root of X. In other words, the inverse of cubing is to take the cube root. Sounds like it makes sense, right? Just the same way uh, when, when we multiply by two, its inverse is to divide by two, of course. All right, so let's see what we, what, what, we, what we are expected to do. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna do these two operations, these two compositions, and we are supposed to get x as our final answer, let's see. So g bubble with g inverse of x. This is g evaluated at its inverse. So in this case, the outermost, which is g, which is something to the third power, its inverse is the cube root of x. Right, and in this case, notice how the cube cancels the cube root, and our final answer is x. So so far we get x, and so far it's its inverse. Now let's do the composition the other way around. The inverse evaluated at the original function. That is g inverse evaluated at g. So g inverse, which is cube root, but instead of x, I'm gonna write the function g, which is x cubed. And notice how these cubes cancel to give us simply x as final answer. So yes, these two functions are inverses of one another. All right, so in this case, so note it, if you recall from the previous section, let me show you the paper from the previous section. In general, F composed with G is not the same as G composed with F, all right, when, when we reverse the order. However, when we have a function and it's inverse, in this case, the order doesn't matter if you do one or the other or the other or one. Notice when you do the compositions, you get the same thing, the same quantity, which in this case is x. Let's look at another example dealing with the same finding, the uh, verifying that the inverse is such and such. All right, so first of all, what is this? F evaluated at F inverse, which is we're going to use the symbols f bubble f prime or f inverse rather. So, um, so we're going to evaluate f, which is one over x minus one. But I'm not going to write x. I'm going to write one over x plus one. All right. Now I'm going to simplify this one minus one, this cancel, one minus one cancels, and we get simply one over one over x. Okay, be careful here, because when we divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, which is x. So we get x, so we got x. So far, these two are inverses of each other. Now let's do the other way around. Actually, bubble with f, which is f. 
So the function, the inverse function, which is 1 over x plus 1, but I'm not going to write 1 over x. I'm going to write the original function, which is 1 over x minus 1. But again, be careful here because here we are dividing by a fraction that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 over x minus 1 is x minus 1 and then add this plus 1 and these two guys cancel surprise and what do we get at the end? Simply x. So again we just have showed how these two functions are inverses to one another. Okay, so you might remember symmetry from chapter, I believe it was chapter either 3 or 4. So we're going to make a connection between inverse, inverse functions and symmetry to obtain graphs of, in, of, fun, of inverse functions given the graph of some random function without even knowing the, um, without even knowing the rule. Okay, so the idea is that the graph of a one-to-one -one function and the graph of its inverse are both symmetric to the line y equals x. All right, so we will we will verify this result with an exercise that we have here. Okay, so we're given this graph. We're given this graph and uh, we are asked to find its inverse. How do we find its inverse? So first of all, let's find the points of f of x. For example, I'm going to find this point, that point, and that point. This point corresponds to negative 5, negative 4. The second point corresponds to 2, comma, negative 1. And the third point corresponds to 3, comma, 5. I'm going to find its inverse. Remember how we find the inverse function? All we do is reverse the order of the order pairs, negative 4, so negative 5, negative 4 becomes a negative 4, negative 5. The order pair 2, comma, negative 1 becomes a negative 1, comma, 2. And the order pair 3, comma, 5 becomes 5, comma, positive 3, 5, comma, 3. And we are going to plot those points and connect them with lines and that's going to give us the graph of F inverse. All right, so negative 4, negative 5, it's going to be here negative 1 comma 2 it's going to be there and 5 comma 3 and let's connect the dots with lines and we do that and as you can see here if you notice this is the line which I'm going to draw in a dashed form can you see the symmetry? Can you see the symmetry? These two graphs are symmetric to the graph of y equals x. You see the whole thing on the same thing on both sides of this dashed line. All right. Let's move on to the next page. Next and last page of this video. Find the inverse of a function defined by an equation. So I have a series of steps here that we are going to follow in order to find the inverse function. So every time you have exercises like this, uh, you are going to um, you're going to be given the function in the f of x notation. So the first step we do is to change the notation to that of y. Replace f of x with y. Alright? So how do we go about that? Well, all we do is go y equals the cube root of x plus 4 minus 7. Okay? And then the second step is to interchange x and y. So this y becomes an x, this x becomes a y. Isn't it the same that we did when we re when we replace uh, when we find inverse of a function from f of x to x inverse? 
we interchanged x's with y's. So we're going to do the same here with the equation. Cube root of y plus 4 minus 7. We are going to give, be given another equation. Solve that equation for y. All right. So first thing we do in this case is add 7 to both sides to get the cube root of y plus 4 equals to x plus 7. And then to get rid of the y, the I mean this, the cube root, all we do is cube both sides. So we cancel this um, cube root with the cube to get y plus 4 equals x plus 7 quantity cubed. Finally, what we do is subtract 4 to get y by itself. Cancel these 4's and y equals x plus 7 cubed minus 4. So that's the new equation actually. Well, I shouldn't have a uh, call that as our final answer, not yet. That's not yet our final answer because there's one more little thing to do. Once we solve for y, we replace this y with the inverse function notation f inverse. And this is final answer. Let's do another example. Let's do another example. So, uh, let's see. f of x equals 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. So, we replace the notation f of x with that of y equals 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. Step number 2 is to, is to change the y's for x's and the x's for y's. After doing that, the next step is to solve the equation for y and well, this one is going to be a very interesting one to solve. Okay, this is 1 below the letter x. You might want to just cross multiply here. So this is x times y minus 1 times 1 times 2 y plus 1, which is simply 2y plus 1. I'm going to distribute these two, x times y, x times negative 1, that's x, y, minus x, equals 2y plus 1. Now, how do we solve this for y? Well, in this case, our target variable, which is y, we want all terms on the left-hand side of the equation, all terms containing that target variable, which in this case is the y. So I'm going to, I'm going to subtract 2y on both sides of the equation and then I'm going to have xy minus 2y minus x equals 1. Now I'm going to add x because this x doesn't have a y. I'm going to move it to the other side by adding x to both sides. So I'm going to have xy minus 2y equals 1 plus x or x plus 1, it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. And then we are a couple steps to get y by itself. So the reason why we send all terms containing our target variable to the left hand side is because we can make that a GCF to factor it out. And finally get rid of that x minus 2 from the left hand side to get y by itself. So y equals x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. But that's not the final answer. The final answer is to replace, to do the, la the step 4, which is to replace y with f inverse. Right. 
Let's do one last example and this one be careful here with these conditions and this type of uh, problems because well you'll see. First step is replace f of x with y. Um, and then interchange x's with y's. So first of all I'm going to subtract 9 and I'm going to get y squared equals to x minus 9. And then to get y by itself y will be plus minus the square root of x minus 9. So this is the reason for which without this condition, without that condition, this function is not one-to-one. -one. However, with that condition, um, I'm going to define this function in a piecewise way. So this is going to be x equals, uh, I'm going to say, negative square root of x minus 9 when for negative numbers and square root of x plus 9 for greater than or equal 0. So in this case because we have this condition here this condition x greater than or equal 0 we are going to use only the positive part of that um, of that you know of that of this function so f inverse will be yes the square root of x plus 9 if and only if only if x greater than 0 we still need to carry that condition. And this is a good place to quit. I'll see you on the next video.